Hello, and welcome to our recording of a ballistics pendulum. So this is a piece of equipment that you guys were going to have access to in the lab, but can't now. So we're going to model this here on the video, collect the data. Then I'm going to push pause on the video for a moment, switch to a screenshot where I can work with you guys on how to analyze the data that we're about to collect. So the idea with the ballistics pendulum is that this is a cannon. It's going to fire a ball. The ball is going to get lodged inside of this pendulum and the energy that it transfers is going to cause the ball and pendulum together to swing and as they swing it's going to record the angle of the maximum height and from that angle we'll be able to figure out how fast the ball shoots out of this cannon so a similar process is used when we're analyzing um, bullets or a bow and arrow. It's just usually this is all inside of a mechanical system so that you don't see the parts. So we need some data and I've got it all written down here. Don't worry about seeing this real quick because when I switch over to the screenshot, I'll be able to put that all up for you and it'll be ready to go and you'll be able to collect your data. But just so you know that I've got it here and I'm gonna be able to write it down. I also have a balance off to the side here that I'll make visible to you in a minute and a ruler. And those were the pieces that we needed in lab to be able to collect all the data that we need. All right, so here goes. I'm going to pull this back. This is actually quite a loud trigger. So if anybody's asleep at your house, make sure that you turn the sound down before I launch it. I'm gonna load the steel marble in there. And here's hoping three, two, one. All right. Now what we need to do is look over here at the angle. So I'm looking right over here and I see 21, 22, 23, 24.5. So I'm gonna record that. I'm gonna show you guys that one more time just so that you guys can see what happened. I have a little poker here to collect the ball out of the back of the pendulum. So all I did was insert that in a little hole in the back so that I could retrieve my ball without ruining the rubber stopper that's in there that keeps the ball inside the pendulum once they connect. So I'm cocking the gun back again, making sure everything's lined up. I'm gonna load my ball. And three, two, one. Ooh, the pendulum turned that time. So I'm not gonna use that piece of data because if the pendulum turned, then it means that it didn't push as far as it could have. No problem. That's why we do multiple trials. And three, two, one. There, that was a good trial. And if I look over there, I see 21, 22, 23, 23.5. 1, 2, 3, yep, 23.5 this time. So when I hit pause, I will do that a few more times so that you guys have five pieces of data to work with. But now there's a couple more things that we need to be able to collect in order to use energy and momentum to find this speed. So what I'm doing right now is twirling the pendulum to unthread it up here at the top. And it's gonna come loose nicely for us. I'm going to grab my balance, set it up here where you guys can see it. And you remember the funny part of this, make sure we lift the lid. I found a little cup so that I could record the mass of my ball without it rolling all over and I'm zeroing the balance. And I have a mass of 8.5 grams. So I'm gonna write that down in my data. Set the ball aside. I need the mass of the pendulum. So here's my pendulum. There's the balance. 61.9 grams. And then the last piece that I need is the length of the pendulum from this little nut where it, where it connects to the bar to the bottom of the pendulum. So I've got a ruler here, and I'm going to look straight down from above, and mine is 23.6 centimeters. 
23.6 centimeters. So that was all the data collection that we needed. I'm going to hit pause here for a second. When we come back, we'll be on a different view of a screen. All right, so we're back, and you can see that I transferred the data that we collected together up onto the top of the screen for you guys. Um, so you should be able to get that data copied while we move on and look at the math that's going to be involved. So I'm going to start with drawing a picture of what we saw. Now, I'm learning that my browser is fine. It's our internet provider that is so completely bogged down right now by everything that's going on that it makes my computer run a little slow. So I'm going to be writing really pretty slow, which hopefully will help you guys be able to keep up with me in real time. So I know that most of you guys are copying angles while I'm doing this. So there is no rush at all. You always can hit pause if you need to, just like our lecture videos. And that's going to swing up. To an angle. All right. So that's the picture of what we saw in the pendulum, I hope, more or less. I'm going to draw a little hook in there, but not have the ball in there. So we saw the ball move sideways, and then it connected with the pendulum that had no speed, and the two of them swung with a slightly lesser velocity up until it got as high as it could. At this point right here, the velocity is zero, and then the pendulum and the ball system swings back down again. Okay, so the motion here is all kinetic energy, swings up until it's as high as it can get, and at this point it's all potential energy, and then it returns back down and it bounced a couple times. We're not going to worry about the bounce. So what we want to use this system for is we want to know the initial velocity of the ball. That's our unknown right now. So let's start by looking at what momentum looks like in this picture. I have, oops, I lost my camera for a second. The mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball plus the mass of the pendulum times the velocity of the pendulum. Conservation of momentum says these need to be equal to. Don't know what that just was, but that was cool. The mass of both times the velocity of both. I'm just looking at my picture. They're together. All right. So then let's go through here and plug in what we know. I know the mass of my ball. I do need to turn it into um, the right units. So remember, I'm going from grams to kilograms. Grams are the little pieces, so I don't have very many kilograms. I'm going to go three to the left with my decimal. 0.0085. The velocity of the ball is my question. That's the piece I don't know. Plus the mass of my pendulum, also in grams. So I'm going to go three over with that too. 0 0.0619 kilograms. Now, the velocity of my pendulum as it sat there and waited for the ball to hit it. We know this. This is a piece we know. It's zero. The mass of both together. So I'm going to take my calculator and add those up. I'm not doing any calculations for you guys. This is on your homework, so you can work those out. And the velocity of both. Now, I don't have this yet. Here's the math we're going to do on the side to get that. 
I'm going to change colors here so that hopefully we can watch where this system comes from. Remember up here I said we're all potential energy. And potential energy is mass times gravity times height. All right. Well, that's good. I've got mass. It's the ball and the pendulum together, so I'm going to do the mass of both. We know what gravity is. Gravity is always the same, 9.81 meters per second per second. We need to find this height piece. But we have all the pieces we need to find it. It's not going to be hard. So I have a pendulum. I'm going to draw a little box at the end just to simplify. That has a length of L. We measured it. 23.6 centimeters or 0.236 meters. Awesome. When it swung upward, the same pendulum with that same 0.236 meters swung up at an angle that we're going to get by taking the average of that data that's up at the top of the screen. And what I can do here is I can make a right triangle and I can find out this piece right here. I'm going to move that L out of the way for us quick by clicking on my eraser, sneaking in there. All right, so I want to find this piece right here, this partial length. So I'm going to use my hypotenuse, 0 0.236. I'm touching, so I'm going to say cosine of the angle to do that. But what I really want is how high did the pendulum swing? I want this piece right here. Here's my height. It got that high from its rest position. Well, my height is going to be 0.236, the total length of the pendulum, minus this piece right here. So minus 0.236 cosine of the angle. Let's see if I can squeeze that in. Awesome. You guys can do this math. This is just trig with sines and cosines. So make sure that your calculator is in degrees. Go to town, get that H. You're going to find a potential energy that's very small, and that's okay. The next piece to solving this, though, we're, and we're almost there, is to remember that up here, I'm all potential energy. But down here, when it first strikes and they first come together, this is 100% kinetic energy. Remember, the pendulum was in its rest position. So that means that my potential energy at the top of the swing is going to be equal to my kinetic energy at the bottom of the swing. All right. Well, I just solved for potential energy up there. So that becomes the same number as my kinetic energy, and my kinetic energy is one-half times the mass. Now, if I come back and look at my picture, I'm looking right here. I'm trying to highlight it for you guys, going around and around and around. That's both. The pendulum and the ball are together. So that would be the mass of both times the velocity squared. I should be able to solve that for the velocity right here at this point. Well, hang on. If that's true, then I can take this velocity right here and come around and I can plug it in right there. And when I do that, I should be able to go back and solve for, whoops, solve for the velocity of the ball because I'll have all the pieces. So I used potential energy first, and I had to solve for H to do it, and then I used kinetic energy second. And then I plugged that in, 
and my momentum equation is actually the third piece of the puzzle. It's the third thing that I use, and I'm solving for this. This is my unknown. So respect to the machines that are programmed to do this for us when we shoot a gun at the gun range or our bow at the archery range. This is the math that that system works through for us. And this is what you need to get through, um, I believe it's 8 through 14 on your homework. All right, we should be all set. Make sure that you come into the WebEx conference if you need any help with this system. I'm going to do the math outside of this, and I'm going to post the right answer with this video. So you can go back to the introduction to the video, and you'll see the answer that I got when I did the math.